Okay. Uh, thank you for participating today. We are joined by Norfolk State's Jalen Hawkins, and we'll begin the press conference. I ask that you please use the raise hand function to indicate whether you would like to ask a question when, and when you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. Our first question will be from Adam Winkler, WTKR. Jalen, congrats on the win. I appreciate you. You guys waited nine years to get back in the big dance. You knew it wasn't going to be easy. Uh, it looked like you were coasting at halftime. Can you take us through the emotions of not only the second half, but those final few seconds, and then obviously the elation afterwards? Um, our coach always told us to stay positive coming out. Uh, we came out second half kind of slow, but uh, he told us to stay positive, fight through it. And we top 30 in defense. We're not top 30 in defense for no reason. So we knew we had to get a stop to win the game. Next question is from Scott Cash, WVEC. Just share with us your feeling of your first March Madness experience. What was that like? It was an amazing experience. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy me and my team made it here. It was a tough year, long year. We stayed together. We're here. We're dancing. That was the big goal of the year from start to finish. Our next question comes from John Waro from the Associated Press. Hey, Jalen. Um, John Waro with the Associated Press here calling uh, on the line. Just um, wondering the relief that you guys felt and the jubilation you felt now, how do you look ahead to, is it too early to look ahead at Gonzaga? Or you just, um, um, you know, enjoy this moment. Uh, no, it starts tonight. We start our scout tonight. Everything we locked in Friday night, Saturday night, we locked in. Our next question uh, comes from Reese Becker. Reese, if you'd identify your uh, media outlet, please. Yes, uh, Reese back from fifth quarter. Uh, Joe, how, how's it feel having a once in a lifetime performance in this kind of stage? Uh, I feel amazing right now. I'm kind of excited. Uh, I stay positive all year. I've been in the gym all year, night, night in, night out, early morning, 6 a.m. I knew it was happen, bound to happen. God was with me tonight. <clears throat> thank, thank, thankful for him. Next question comes from Stefan Krajisnik from the Indianapolis Star. Hey, Jalen, Stefan Krajisnik here with the Indy Star. It kind of seemed like pregame and, and throughout the game, this is just a team that kind of uh, plays well together, has a lot of fun together. Um, I mean, just how close is this team now at this point of the season, and how much easier does I guess that make that when you're, when you're so close and, and Appalachian State makes that run late in the game? Uh, we was kind of panicking a little bit because we wasn't expecting them to come back so fast off of how they did, but – once again, our coach told us to stay positive, play defense. That's what we strive on. So we knew we had to play defense from the jump. Next question is Joe Diller Jr. And if you would uh, identify your media outlet, please. Yes, uh, Joe Dillard with Legacy Maker Sports Network here. And uh, talk to me about how it felt to come off the bench and give your team a spark. And uh, did you feel a certain moment being hot or did it kind of all just come in the rhythm? Uh, I kind of got hot off of my second um, three-pointer, but um, I kind of I kind of come off the bench, give my team the spark all year. Uh, coming off six, man, I kind of like that. But that's really it. <laughs> awesome. Next question is from Matt Hatfield from 94.1 ESPN Radio. Hey, Jalen, congrats on the win. Um, tell me about what you're thinking there when Devontae goes to the foul line, two clutch free throws. I know he had a rough night, but uh, just the confidence you guys, him with the ball in his hand late, what he does for you guys. Um, I knew they was good. I mean, he struggled earlier on in the season on his free throws, but like I said, we was in the gym night in, night out, early mornings. I knew they was good. I didn't even have to look at him. I trust him. Our 
our final question uh, for our player is, uh, let's see, Danny Barletta from the Daily Campus. Hey, Jalen, uh, congrats on the win. Um, you know, obviously a career night for you. Uh, is this what you kind of pictured when you uh, transferred to Norfolk State? Yes, sir. 100%. Jalen, thank you so much for your time and best of luck in the next round. And uh, we will be joined momentarily by Coach Robert Jones. Okay, I appreciate everybody for the questions too. Have a blessed day. I would ask the media that please use this time to raise or lower your hand as necessary. Oh, man. This is crazy. Coach, congratulations. Uh, we are now joined by Coach Robert Jones, and uh, we will begin with an opening statement from Coach and then go to questions. Wow, what a game. I mean, March Madness is back, right? Um, you know, survive in advance, and that's exactly what we did. We knew that, that Appalachian State wasn't going to go away. Um, they came back from a big deficit earlier in the season to another opponent, so we told the guys that, and they did it. And then we went cold, and um, they got hot, and, uh, and um, you know, it made it a basketball game. You know, this is a tournament of champions, so 16 points is not a really a big lead um, when a tournament of champions because it's, everyone has championship pedigree. But once again, um, I, I like to say kudos to my guys to, for relaxing and staying calm down the stretch when we could have easily folded when App got up, uh, I think they got up four points. And, um, you know, we kept our calm and, and we was able to survive in advance and able to cancel that 930 flight tomorrow. Okay, Coach, our uh, first question comes from Adam Winkler. Coach, congrats on the uh, stress-free dub. Ta, I got more grays in my beard now. I'll tell you that much. Jeez, it's great. Uh, other than hopefully how to pronounce uh, the city of Norfolk, what did, uh, what did the country learn about your squad tonight? Resilience. Uh, that's something that we've been preaching all year. Um, you know, we, we came back from down, being down, you know, 17 against George Mason early this year. Um, we had to, and that was a that was a different type of adversity. So this time was adversity. We uh, were you know up 16. They came to the lead, and we we fought back. And you know we got a bunch of fighters, man. You know, from the players to the managers. I mean, everyone has different paths in their lives, and everybody's a bunch of fighters. And and we try to stay as long as possible. Our next question comes from Reese Becker. Hey, Coach. Uh, in your TV interview, you said that you already had a scout on Gonzaga, and Jalen said that the work begins tonight. So I just was wondering, how long do you guys usually work on scouting, you know, right after a game, and what time tonight do you think you guys will end up going to bed? So from a coaching standpoint? Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to go to sleep, honestly. I don't know when other coaches are going to go to sleep because we usually do scout two days in advance for our players to start getting familiar with um, the next opponent. Obviously, tomorrow is only going to be a 24-hour in advance scout and, and, you know, and, of course, shoot around the day of. But um, as far as, uh, you know, being a, preparing it and giving it to the guys, we're going to stay up all night to finish it. I mean, we've already started it as coaches because we, we believed in this team. We believed that we were going to play them, so we already started. But now we're going to finish it and then um, be ready to present to the team tomorrow. Our next question comes from Scott Cash, WVEC. What do you have to say about Jalen Hawkins? He drives me crazy. He knows it. But Jayhawk showed up tonight. Uh, we needed every single bucket that he gave us. I'm not quite sure exactly what he finished with, but I know he had 20 at half, and we needed every single bucket of it um, to win by one. You know, it seemed like every game today was a low-scoring game for the most part. I'm not quite sure what the Drake Wichita State game was, but I know the other three, other two were, including ours. Um, so other three, but um, you know, we needed every single point that he gave us, and um, you know, he did a great job. Did a great job, especially picking up with Devontae Carter didn't have his best game. Uh, Keontae Chavis didn't have his best game. Joe Bryant didn't have his best game. But that's why we're a team and, and other guys stepped up. Next question from Stefan uh, Krajiznik, uh from the Indianapolis Star. Coach, uh, it seemed like pregame in the layup lines. Your, your guys were throwing some dunks down and uh, pretty engaged on the bench throughout the game. I mean, 
just how much fun does this team have playing together and how much does that help, you know, in games like this? Uh, it, it, means, uh, it means everything. I mean, you know, let's face it, 500 people, honestly, that's probably the most people we've played in front of all year. So we've been having to bring our own energy all year. And we talk about that all the time, about manufacturer energy, manufacturer energy, um, BYOE, right? Bring your own energy. So we've been, we've been doing that all year. And um, these, guys, they guys, these guys love each other like brothers. I mean, when you say family, you know, you can see it. Forget about me preaching it. You can see it that these guys are family, you know, and, and they want to do everything they can for their family. And, and then the family didn't want to go home tonight. Next question is from Joe Diller Jr. And Joe, if you could identify your media outlet. Yeah, this is Joe with Legacy Maker of Sports here. How you doing, Coach? Congratulations, man. Hey, how you doing, Joe? I appreciate you. Good, good. So how great is it to have the guys trust the process and to come out and execute so well in the first half and then also to trust the resiliency of relying on defense in the second half and, as they said earlier, making a positive approach toward everything? And trusting it all the way through. First half, we you know obviously we got just about any shot that we wanted. We were executing to a T. We were executing the game plan to a T. Um, that's the, sometimes the risk you you take. Uh, I can't say take, but the risk you have when your team is doing so well, and then it's a, a 16 point game at, at halftime. You try to tell these guys that 16 points isn't nothing, you know. But you know, once again, you're dealing with 18 to 22 year olds, and sometimes that message doesn't always resonate until it gets uh, a little sticky. And then when it got a little sticky, the guys, uh, you know, responded, and we we did execute in the stretches that we needed to, and we executed defensively um, to finish the game. Well, we we got what we call a turkey, uh, like bowling. We got so we got three strikes in a row. We got three stops in a row to finish the game, and that, and that's exactly what we talk about every day in practice. A turkey. Excellent job. Next question from John uh, Waro from the Associated Press. Hey, uh, uh, Robert, congrats on the win. Uh, John Warrell with the AP. Just wondering, how do you approach going from the euphoria and relief of, of winning this game to now facing the number one team in the nation? And, and it, how, how do you approach that? <laughs> you're laughing, you're smiling, but how do you approach that with your team, uh, know, knowing that this is going to be what you're going to be facing anyways? I mean, you take it with a grain of salt. You know, I, like I tell people all the time, man, the pressure was was – was getting here, you know, being a, from a one bid lead. Everybody's who's in a one bid league across the country. That's where all the pressure is at. Is trying to get here. Once you get here, you play with house money, and uh, you know it's like you know you just got to go out and play. Yeah, I know we're playing the Lakers and the you know, of, of college basketball, the Brooklyn Nets of college basketball. They got three All Americans. I think one first team, two third team, and we know it's going to be a challenge. We know, I mean, it's no secret that it's going to be a challenge. But at the same time, you know, we have to lace them up and we have to play the basketball game. I mean, we've been in a situation before as a program with Missouri and Alabama and NIT and, and things like that, and no one gave us a shot, and we were able to come out on top. This is a whole different animal in Gonzaga, um, and we, we understand that. You know, trust me, we understand that. But at the same time, um, as a program, I mean, we have the two largest victories at, by point spread in both the NIT and the NCAA, so why not do it again? Next question comes from Matt Hatfield from 94.1 ESPN Radio. Coach, congrats on the win. Uh, I asked Jalen Hawkins about Devontae Carter at the end of two free throws. Any doubt? And he didn't have a doubt at all. How about you? A little bit nervous there. And what's it say for him to come <laughs> in that spot, given, you know, that's a pressurized spot there for him to come through with that having not his best night? To be honest with you, I would have probably had more doubt at the beginning of the year than I do at the end. Um, as, you know, as everyone knows, Devontae Carter's overall free throw percentage isn't that great. But if you look at the last 10 to 12 games, it's actually pretty good. So with that being said, I didn't really have a lot of doubt. What I, what I did, though, I told the, the bench, no one talked to him on the bench. Because, you know, sometimes you get somebody, hey, 10 toes to the rim, elbow in. Don't say anything to him. Let him just go up there and shoot the free throws. And, and kudos to that young man who didn't have the greatest game. But like I told him in, there, in the locker room when he was crying, that without him, we wouldn't even be in the situation that we're in right now anyway. So stars are allowed to have bad games, too. So, you know, he'll have a better game, hopefully, uh, on, on Saturday. Next question comes from uh, Sean Robertson, WTVR. Can you hear me now, Coach? Yeah, I got you. Okay. Sean Robertson, CBS 6 in Richmond, Virginia. Congratulations on the win. We talked after the MEAC championship about what it meant to return to the NCAA for the program. But now that you got this win, what does that say, not only for your program, but for the MEAC as a whole to get this victory to move on into the NCAA tournament? I mean, it's amazing that two HBCUs moved on tonight, you know, uh, and that's, 
I don't know if that's the first time or, or whatever it is, but that's just amazing. It just shows that, you know, basketball, you can play across the, the, the country, you know, and, and for us, that's uh, the first MEAC win, I think, in a long time, honestly. There's been a lot of teams that got to the tournament but haven't got a win, and, um, and we were able to get a MEAC win, and, um, you know, it's just tremendous. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, happy. I'm, I'm happy for the conference. I'm happy for the school. I'm happy for the young men in that locker room. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's never about me. It's about every, everybody else, and, and I'm happy for just – I'm happy for HBCUs. I'm happy for, you know, everybody. Thanks, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. Next question comes from Adam Winkler, WTKR. Maybe Adam left. Final question comes from Kevin McCaskill Jr. And if you would identify your media organization. My media organization is FP Sports, uh, Forest Park Media. Hey, Kevin. Can you hear, yeah, can you hear you. me, Coach? Yes, I got you, sir. Uh, can Gonzaga, can you beat Gonzaga in the next round if Devontae Carter has another bad shooting night? No. <laughs> that, might, that might have been the simplest answer all night. But everybody, we can, not just Devontae Carter, Joe Bryan, Keontae Chavis, J.J. Matthews have to give us more. Um, there's a lot of guys that didn't play well tonight, and we were still able to win. So, um, you know, these guys owe it to themselves, owe it to the team to make sure that they have a better game on, on Saturday. Thank you, Coach, and congratulations on the victory. Thank you. Appreciate you. Coach, right. thank you very much. Thanks, and guys. The appreciate you. Luck. See you on Saturday. Okay, for everyone else, that's it for this post-game news conference. A transcript of the coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports and posted along with the recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. And we thank you for joining us tonight.
Okay, we're joined by uh, Coach Kearns. Thank you uh, for everyone participating today. We will uh, begin with an opening statement from Coach Kearns and then go to questions. Please use the raise uh, hand function to indicate that you would like to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. Uh, Coach, please give us a brief opening statement and then we'll go to questions. Yeah, I want to first of all congratulate Norfolk State and uh, Coach Jones on a, on a on a great win, and um, you know, uh, you know, on our end a very, you know, tough, heartbreaking loss. And so I, um, I, uh, I wish them well in the tournament, and um, uh, I'm certainly proud of how our team, you know, fought back, and and uh, certainly that's March Madness. It's March Madness. It's uh, there's 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 heartbreak. There's buzzer beaters. There's uh, that that that's it right there, and that's why everybody loves it. And um, you know, just what a uh, what a great moment for our country that you know March Madness and NCAA tournaments back, and uh, it was honored to be a part of the the first four tonight. Okay, thank you, Coach. Uh, we'll now go to questions from the media. Again, uh, please use the raise hand function to indicate that you'd like to ask a question. Our first question will come from David Ware with 24-7 Sports. David, go ahead. Dustin, um, tough loss. Can you take us through that last play? What did you What did you design there, and did it Did it go off the way you had hoped it would? Um, and if not, what kind of you know broke it? Yeah, no, it was uh, it was designed for a back cut for Forrest. We were trying to post up Donovan Gregory. We were lifting everybody up. And uh, we wanted to, 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 to sprint up Justin Forrest and then back cut right to the basket and empty it out. And uh, they made the entry, you know, very difficult. Um, and uh, it just became a broken play. And I, you know, I certainly thought Omanese's three was down and then we got another look at it. But uh, that was the, the, what we were designed for is to get Forrest to lay up at the rent all, off of a back cut. And in terms of um, in terms of the first half, you know, uh, it, it wasn't like you were not getting good looks at the basket. I mean, were they doing anything defensively to disrupt you, or were the shots just not falling? I think it was a little bit of both. I think that they were being very aggressive. They had us back on our heels, um, and then you know, I think that uh, our guys just you know nerves, uh, first time, bright lights, and and uh, just took us a while to settle down, and then. You know, we kept missing and missing, and then the pressure and pressure kept uh, kept mounting there. And so uh, once we settled down and uh, we got back into it and obviously took the lead, but um, uh, just we spent a lot of energy coming back uh, in the game. Thanks, Dustin. Thanks, David. Okay, our next question is going to come from Ethan Joyce with the Winston-Salem Journal. Winston, uh, Ethan, go ahead. Hey, Dustin. Um, you know, I, I guess just kind of, what do you say into the team when you're kind of going through that that stretch where the shots aren't falling like you said? And I, and I wonder, like, was was there a concern that maybe this happens when you guys play so hot in the in the Sun Belt tournament, and then you you do have to face a layoff like like you guys faced between this game and and that set of games? Well, I just told them to trust our reps. I told them that the shots will fall. Uh, just to relax and be confident, and the, and the shots will fall. And I think at halftime, our guys did settle down a little bit. Um, and then, you know, you know, I, I think a little bit of the way we did shoot it. They were they were aggressive with us. I mean, they they were, um, you know, certainly defending the three well in the, in the first half. We had some open looks, but just couldn't get one to fall. Um, and so then they just became more and more more and more pressure shots. But in the second half, I thought we settled down, and uh, you know, certainly gave ourselves an opportunity to win the game. And Jalen Hawkins comes off the bench for them um, and really just kind of takes off from the moment he gets on the court. You know, I guess, what were you guys expecting from him? Did he did he catch the team off guard? Was, no, was, was no. Okay. no, we were expecting him. Uh, he was a guy we were very f uh, focused on. He just got hot, you know, and some of his points were off of our turnovers. And so it wasn't, you know, it was, um, you know, we had 14, I think, four, 10 turnovers in the first half. And so... Um, you know, they had 14 points off our turnovers, so that, that was a little bit of it. Um, but, you know, no, we, were, we were very, very prepared for him. We, we, we thought, um, you know, he was certainly capable of that. But, 
you know, a lot of it was transition and and, um, and and points off turnovers, and then you know he just got hot. There we left him. We we lost him one time in transition and uh, on it on his second three, and I you know, but he was he was feeling it, and uh, certainly you no, know, we were we were very prepared for him. Thanks, Dustin. Okay, our next uh, question is going to come from uh, Luke DeCock from the News and Observer. Hey, Dustin, I'm just curious. You had a couple guys at the end there who were down on the floor for a while. Obviously, the emotion of the situation. But what, what do you say to a player in a situation like that to kind of get them up and get them back to the locker room? And, and what what do you say to your team in a situation like this after the, the run you guys have had? Yeah, I just told our team, um, uh, don't be sad it's over. Be glad it happened. Um, you know, we've got a lot to be proud of. Uh, first of all, I'm proud of how our guys represent our university and our community and their families. Um, but, you know, we, we're, we're hanging the first Sun Belt banner in, 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 in our arena. And there's a lot of banners up there. And, and so, um, you know, this team has a lot to be celebrated for, but um, it, there's emotions, right? This is emotional. And when it comes to a screeching halt there abruptly, especially uh, with an opportunity to win it, uh, that's, that's difficult. That's difficult. But I just told them that, you know, uh, at some point uh, when we get through it, instead of being sad, be glad it happened. Thank you. Okay, our next question is going to be from Carter Hill with the fifth quarter. Carter, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Um, obviously, today didn't go your way, but with the way you guys came back in the second half, what do you think you showed the country about Appalachian State basketball? Yeah, I think that we're fighters. You know, fighters. We came down from 22 a couple weeks ago and won. You know, and certainly we came back uh, tonight and uh, that, 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 that we're never out of it. You know, and we're going to fight and we're going to be at 40 minutes and whether we're up or down. And, and, and so, you know, certainly I'm proud of our guys' fight and togetherness and, 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 and how connected they are because you have to be that way. You know, when you get down, uh, which is – which is which is basketball, right? Um, you have to have a connected group. You have to have high character to be able to come back. Um, and so I, you know, I certainly think that uh, our program's got a lot of character and a lot of fight. Thank you. Okay, our next question is going to be from uh, Silas Albright from the Appalachian. Go ahead. Okay, hey Dustin. Um, yeah, so obviously, just um, uh, Justin Forrest and Michael Almanasi are two two guys, only two guys that play meaning, meaning played meaningful minutes that'll be leaving this year. Um, obviously, a bunch of guys on the team will be returning. Got a really great experience this year with coming to this tournament, and they're going to be in the program for a while. Just um, what can you say about what that'll give them going forward and just the future of the program? Yeah, I mean, I think that I'm not really haven't had chance to think about next year much, but. Um, I think that um, th this this will give our, our program a huge boost um, in the community on campus with our students. Uh, it'll, it should carry a momentum with a lot of excitement into next season. Um, and then we've got a lot of guys with experience going through this and winning the Sun Belt and uh, playing in this tournament. And so, you know, certainly experience is the best teacher. And, uh, you know, certainly we, we, we have a lot of guys in that locker room that got experience playing in this tournament. And then uh, other question for me, just in probably Justin Forrest's, or yeah, Justin Forrest's last game here, he's had quite a career, kind of take over there in the second half, hit those, I think, two or three straight threes, but I really, really get y'all back into it, give you all the lead. Um, just how happy were you, for, were you to see him do that on this big stage? Yeah, I mean, I, I knew he was capable of, you know, he got in foul trouble. We had to set him down and calm him down a little bit, but he got in foul trouble. He played with three fouls, and certainly we did that. And, um, you know, he he's got a lot to be celebrated about, you know. He he's he's had an incredible career here. Uh, he set a lot of um, you know records and and, he, and, he, and then, but most importantly, you know, he got App State to the NCAA tournament, and and so I think that's he's going to be remembered for a lot, but he'll be remembered for getting the App State to the NCAA tournament and and really changing the course of the program. You know, his junior and senior year we had. Uh, uh, we stopped an eight-year losing streak, and then we went on and went to the NCAA tournament. That's what he'll be remembered for, and that's that's pretty special for him. Um, and certainly, um, you know, we're very very proud of him and uh, and all he's accomplished. 
Okay, we have time for a couple more. Uh, David Ware, do you have a follow-up question? Yes, I do, thanks. Um, Dustin, you mentioned that you really haven't thought about next year, you know, uh, specifically. Um, but what's important to carry forward the momentum from this season through the off season, through recruiting, you know, kind of kind of taking the program forward. You know, you're always remembered for how you finished, and you guys finished a, a, with a great run at the end of the season. How do you build on that and then make that sustainable going forward? Yeah, I think that our players now have got it. They, they, now they they've gotten a taste of this. They, they've they've won a Sun Belt championship, so now they know, you know, really what goes all into it, and it, and and taking that you know, to another level, um, you know, we necessarily can't uh, take the same route that we took up the stairwell. we got to take a different uh, route, you know, but we've got to be committed to the same habits um, and standards that we're about. And the new guys that enter our program, our older guys, uh, pulling them aside and say, hey, this is what it takes. Uh, this is what it's all about, and this is the standard we're going to hold you to. And, and then I think that's going to be a, you know, uh, big for us is, um, you know, having that uh, that locker room, um, you know, uh, rise uh, to our standards even more, and 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 um, hold each other to that. You know, and, and, and instead of you know, for us as coaches, we've been coming in and saying, hey, here's what you got to do, here's what you got to do to win, and and I think now our players can start doing that. And, and when that starts happening, uh, then you really start building a program. Uh, when, when players start really coaching players and hold each other accountable instead of always being the coaches. But we were new. We came in second year. Here's what it takes. Here's what it takes. Here's what it takes. Now I think they believe that. And so now it's, uh, it, we need some help doing that. And if, if we can get guys in that locker room really, you know, taking more ownership and, 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 um, and taking that sort of stuff to another level, uh, that, that'll go a long way. Okay, thank you very much, Coach, for uh, your time today. Congratulations on your season. Thank you. We will be, we will be joined uh, momentarily by uh, Justin Force. And again, for the media, please take time now to uh, raise or lower your hand as necessary. Thanks a lot. Go Mountaineers, Thanks. take the stairs. Thanks, Coach. Again, for the media on the call, uh, please uh, uh, be sure in your settings that you are identified by your name and your affiliation. And uh, please use this time to raise or lower your hand uh, as necessary for questions for Justin Forrest, who will join us momentarily.
Is that up, Eric? And for anyone who's just joining us, uh, we're uh, anticipating that Justin Forrest will be joining us uh, here shortly. Um, please uh, use this time to uh, raise your hand if you have a question that you'd like to ask uh, Justin. Okay, we're now joined by uh, Justin Forrest, who scored a team high 18 points for uh, App State. Uh, again, for the media, please use the raise hand function to indicate that you would like to ask a question. Uh, when you're called on for your question, please state your name and your affiliation first. And we'll begin our questions with uh, David Ware from 24 seven sports, David. Justin, you know, when you guys go into the locker room at halftime, you've had a, a you know, a tough run of shooting. Um, you know, you come back out the second half and it was clear that you were, if you were going to go down, you were going to go down fire. And, you know, when you came out of the locker room at halftime, talk a little bit about your mentality and what you were trying to do, not just individually, but to help lift your teammates up. Um, we just try to do our best to um, motivate each other. Uh, we know we didn't have the best first half, <clears throat> and um, it's tough when we come out and, and you know miss shots that we normally make in a game like this that you really want to win. 
Um, but you know, we just we knew we were never out of it. You know, we're, we're never out of it to the blast buzzer sound. So uh, we just came out motivating each other, um, lifting each other up, and, and just continuing to talk to each other the whole half. I've watched you play a lot of basketball over the years here, and um, you know, there are those times when you get in a zone and you're knocking down shots, and you kind of did that tonight. You know, you had a couple threes, you got a drive to the rim, uh, you know, and you push the team back and back in front. When you when you kind of get that feeling like yeah I, I'm I'm really ready to go here, how do you how do you kind of balance staying within the flow of the offense but then also being ready to pull the trigger when you get the chance? Um, we just listen to whatever coach calls. You know he, he he's a great coach. Um, he knows what he's doing. Um, he calls plays for whoever's you know the right plays at the right times. Um, just try to stay within the team. Um, just keep listening to my teammates, and you know I, I trust them, and they trust me, and you know whoever's open, we just hit them and let them knock down the open shot. Last question for me: You've always been um, really have come up big in postseason games. I think you're maybe nine games now. You're averaging about twenty points a game, and I know it's not about the numbers, but you know you, you've always stepped forward uh, when you've had these chances to play in the postseason. You know, what is it about those particular games that have motivated you to be such a consistent performer? Um, I just try to do what I can to help my team win. Um, they play hard for me. I just try to play hard for them. Um, they have my back. I have their back. And, uh, you know, these, these are big games that we, we want to win and we wish we could win, but um, we just wish the outcome was different. So, I, as I said earlier, they trust me and I trust them, and we just go out there and play the game together. Our next question will be from uh, Ethan Joyce from the Winston-Salem Journal. Hey, Justin. I, I'm just curious, is the, the emotions after this game specifically, is it is it kind of complex to really think about right now just because I know it's a loss, it's, it's not what you want, but you also do a lot of good there to really push back and make it a serious game again. You know, what's how does it feel walking away from this one with, with all that it's been? Um, it's tough. Man, we, we we wish we could have this one back for sure. Um, a lot of plays that we wish back we can have for sure. Um, it's 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 just tough, man. We're, I mean, yeah, we're proud to get here, but we we know we belong. Um, we just wish the outcome was different, and it's just it's just a tough pill to swallow. When do you think you're comfortable kind of considering what you've accomplished, whether that's going to continue with with the extra year the NCAA gives you or not? Um, you know, I guess when do you really kind of let yourself think about what you've achieved at App State? Um, I, I, I'm not really sure. It'll, it'll 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 take a minute to get over this one. You know, we 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 just wish we could have this back, man. I mean, I I don't know which other way to put it. Um, I mean, yeah, we all feel like we we did what we were supposed to do this year. We accomplished a lot, but yeah, we we just wish we could have kept making history, but. Um, I'm, I'm not really sure. It'll, it'll, it'll come sooner than later, probably. But um, we just wish we could have this one back. Thanks, Justin. Okay, our next question will come from uh, Carter Hill with the uh, fifth quarter. Hey, Justin. You know, obviously tonight didn't go the way you wanted to, and I asked Coach this as well. But you kind of hit on it earlier. But the way you guys kind of came back in the second half, what do you think that showed the country about? Appalachian State basketball that may not have known a lot about you all this year. Um, I mean, we showed that all year. You know, it's it's, it's, it's been a couple of times where we came out flat in the first half, um, and and tried to pick it up in the second half, but we just we dug a hole, and it was just kind of tough to get out of that hole in the second half. You know, we we got out of it, but you know they persevered, and you know we just we just came up short. Thank you. Okay, do we have any additional questions for uh, Justin? Please raise your hand. Uh, okay, Silas Albright from the Appalachian. Uh, yeah, Justin, I just wanted to kind of ask about, like, you know, obviously both schools here are mid-majors, but App State has been one. And just kind of going through the adversity of just kind of always being an underdog, I don't know, just what, just what can you say about 
your mindset and out, outlook as an App State basketball player and like just what it, what y'all were able to accomplish this year? Um, as you said, you know, we're always the underdog being a mid-major. Um, I feel like a lot of people don't really, a lot of people don't really respect us, but I mean, I mean, I love this team. Um, I love what we were able to accomplish this year. Um, I love playing with these guys. I love playing for these coaches. They, from top to bottom, man, it's just, I just feel like we did something that we'll never forget, but we wish we could have done more. And it's just, it's sad that it has to end like this, but, you know, coach told us that, you know, don't be upset. Well, you could be upset now, but, you know, at the end of the day, just be glad that it happened. We got to experience something like this. And um, we're just going to do what we got to do. Thank you, and congrats on a great year. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any additional questions. So, Justin, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank you. That concludes our post-game news conference. A transcript of the coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports and posted along with the recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. Thank you for joining us.